Um, so this is Clara and Jane. Um, um, Porno is sadly not joining us today because we are experiencing some difficulties uh, with technologies. Uh, we are deeply sorry about this. We are still trying to navigate through this virtual world um, that we are all um, plugged in now. Um, so she cannot join us, um, but she's active on her Facebook account and her social media. She's checking her um, emails regularly. So please feel free um, to email her uh, anytime you want. Um, this is mainly a video from the sabbatical officers uh, to try to put um, uh, the frequent questions that we have received during the last past two weeks um, due to coronavirus um, health crisis, um, because we felt that that we really need to connect with you. Um, even if we've been very active uh, on social media, uh, we are aware that most of you uh, do not check uh, regularly social media, do not have social media access, or maybe are over overwhelmed by social media. Um, so yeah, this is us um, making um, of our FNQ, and we hope this is the first one of many to come. Uh, if you ha have any queries, you can always text us, um, or you can email reception at your org have i said it correctly <laughs> um so we know that information changes a lot uh, and very quickly uh and we will be updating you uh with any tips that we that, that we know that are changing but as it is this is the f and q for monday the 20 the 20 the 30 of march <laughs> so any information um this is it. Um, so some of the questions that we perceive is, what is the university doing? Okay, so the university has formed a number of contingency groups um, to help monitor the situation, um, to move all of the teaching online, um, and to try and minimize the impact on students. Um, so we sit on some of these, we don't sit on all of them. Um, so two that we don't sit on are the major incidents response team and a subgroup of the university executive board. Um, ones that we do sit on are the academic contingency group that I'm part of um, and the student issues, um, welfare and wellbeing group that Perna and Clara sit on. Um, there are also a number of groups under those um, that deal with different things. Um, so for example, there's one on uh, PGR issues. Uh, there are some that are looking at PGT issues as well. Um, so there's lots of different things going on. Um, but out of those groups, we've had a number of different outcomes. Um, so there's been guidance going out, but some really positive outcomes that we've had uh, that you might have seen about are the emergency fund and the accommodation costs. So the emergency su support fund was announced last week. Um, so this is a a uh, pot of money that students can apply to if they're struggling financially because of the COVID-19 situation. Um, so there is more information up on uh, the York website on that um, if you want to apply to it. It's open until Wednesday, so make sure you get your applications in soon. Um, the other thing is accommodation. So a lot of students have obviously left their accommodation to go back home. Um, and will not be living in their accommodation for third term. Um, so we were talking to the university about uh, basically releasing those students from their contracts, um, which has been done. So again, if you are not staying on campus um, in your accommodation for next term, then check out the website. There is a way there for you to um, get out of your contract. So our next question is, what's the GSA doing? And Clara's gonna answer this one. Um, so a part of having representation on the different committees that and contingency groups that the university has set up, um, we launched our wellbeing campaign, Keep Home and Carry On, um, uh, which is basically uh, trying to support our students to take care of themselves during isolation, but also to create a quarantine community. So over the coming weeks and over the past weeks, um, we we've created a community space um, to help as much isolation uh, together and concentrate um, on basically um, good things in life and like um, to try like to deliver some tips and tricks to face loneliness and to provide a series of online events. Um, so basically we put together a calendar of online activities uh, that has from fitness sessions that I'm sure you've already seen um, to the music playlist to family activities, online coffee meetups and book recommendations and online karaoke. Um, so this initiative has taken most of our time this week apart from the committees. Uh, 
and considering that uh, we had a range of three to four activities over the past weeks, we've tried to reduce this now um, to just one or two, um, so we can also have some me alone time <laughs> during the days. Uh, but I am deeply grateful for everyone that has joined already the community. Uh, it's working really good. Uh, I'm really happy to see all of you. And um, Jane has also been uh, super active in, in the book uh, in the book clubs. Um, and I think like we are all finding different activities that we enjoy. I have to say the fitness is not one of them. <laughs> um, so that's basically what the GSA has been doing uh, for the next weeks. We are going to try um, to keep working on the campaign and, and joining with other student unions and the city council too. Um, we are going to try to develop new uh, guidelines and um, FNQs um, and maybe also that some like well-being tips. Um, so we are not part of the NUS, we are not part of the National Student Union, but we are in regular contact with other student unions. So we have um, set, up, uh, set up several groups with uh, well-being well sabbatical um, um, officers at other unions. We are also part of the Northern SU group uh, and we was, were already part of the postgraduate um, network nationally. Um, so these are some of the things that we've been doing. If you find that we can do anything else to help you or to support you, please um, don't hesitate to email us. Now, this next question is for Jane. How are extensions and exceptional circumstances going to work? Okay, so this is a two-part answer um, because extensions and exceptional circumstances are two different things. Um, so currently, extensions are being decided by departments. Um, the main reason for this is because the university feels that departments are best suited to know um, when their students need an extension um, and when they potentially need them um, in order to make sure that staff workload isn't too much as well. Um, so there were some decisions made last week about um, exam boards and when they were taking place, um, primarily for undergraduate students um, so that there could be some sort of a little bit of leeway um, in, when ex in when exams and assessments were going to be taking place. Um, so for talk master students, um, we, I was in a meeting about two hours ago talking about extensions for those students. Um, there hasn't been a decision that's been made yet, um, but there are discussions going on around um, extensions for um, both talk master students um, and also for research students. Um, there haven't been any decisions yet, but when there have been, um, you will be um, informed of those. So the second one is exceptional circumstances. Um, so normally when you make an exceptional circumstances complaint, uh, claim even, not complaint, different things, um, you have to um, submit evidence um, from people like your doctor, um, but obviously that's not possible um, with the current situation. You can't necessarily get to see a doctor um, and there are lots of other extenuating circumstances that the university is taking into account. Um, and because of that, all requirements um, for evidence have been waived. So if you need to go through that process, please do get in contact with the advice service. Um, they have all the necessary information to support you through that. It might be worth noting that some of the exceptional circumstances that are not taken into consideration is obviously being ill, but also having a domestic situation that is challenging, uh, not being able to have internet access or a suitable laptop, um, having to under have additional paid or voluntary work required uh, for the COVID-19, or having an impact on your mental health um, due to the current health crisis. So. Um, yeah, as Jane has said, please um, contact your department and the student hub uh, with any queries regarding this. Um, some other questions that we had. What platforms will assessments be provided? Um, so again, this is going to be a, it's a department specific answer. Um, so at the beginning of last week, I believe it was, or the end of the week before, I can't remember the exact date. Um, departments were given guidance on how to change their assessments to fit the online formats. Um, so they were given a number of different options um, to primarily move away from um, exams, um, preferably to coursework if they felt that they could do that, um, but also to um, open-ended exams 
um, if they felt that that was appropriate. So it will depend on your department as to what your assessments have been changed to. Um, and then whatever they're changed to, um, the platforms used for that will depend as well on your department. Um, so the, um, there's a specific team within the university that are providing support to um, staff and academics who are giving assessments, um, but it's going to depend on what the assessment is, um, on what services your department uses. So for example, if they use Blackboard or if they use Canvas or Moodle, um, the department is currently best place to make their decision. They should have communicated that with you, <laughs> what's been happening, but if they haven't, then get in touch with either myself or your course reps. Um, uh, I'm more than happy to help out in situations like that. Okay, next one. Um, how are students who need access to face-to-face -face interviews, data um, access, um, or research to students that, are, are, that need data collection and they are not accessing, how are they going to be able to do their dissertations and is there going to be any compensation regarding this? Um, so, again, a two-prong question. So, for taught master students, um, again, I've just come from a meeting talking about your dissertations and what's going to be happening with those. Um, it's sort of a much more department-specific thing um, and very much dependent on your individual dissertation and what you might be doing with that. Um, so there are some departments um, where you will be more heavily affected. So for example, if you need access to uh, lab equipment in the sciences, um, if you have to do a play, for example, in TFTI, um, things like that um, are not as easy to make up um, as in some other departments. So I can't give you an answer because I don't know what every um, department is specifically doing. Um, but there is hopefully going to be some guidance going out to departments in how to make sure that their taught master students are supported um, through this stage um, and to make sure that you can complete your dissertation if you feel that you're able to do so. Um, again, I would suggest getting in contact with your supervisor, with your department, um, and if you have any specific concerns as well, please do get in contact with me. Um, university is very keen to hear um, taught master students' views on what they would like to happen with their dissertations, so do just drop me an email. Um, the same goes for PGR students as well, um, please do get in contact with me. Um, again, yours is much more specific depending on where you are in your PhD, um, what type of data you're collecting um, as to um, whether you'll be able to continue um, and also it depends on what you feel that you're able to do um, so get in contact with your supervisor get in contact with your department um, and they should be able to give you much more specific advice than i'm doing right now <laughs> okay what about our students that need access to specialist resources um, such as the birth week archives or audio facilities on campus and what is being done to support them okay so um, I'm not going to talk more about on-campus facilities um, because I feel like we've covered that a little bit um, but for sort of library resources um, the library before we went into um, sort of a more quarantine type of situation um, the library was working really hard to try and get as many of their resources online as possible um, obviously now that's not as possible because the library is closed um, but what they are doing is they're working with a lot of institutions across um, the country to try and get access to as many resources as possible. Um, obviously for more specialist resources, um, such as those that are available through um, the Borthwick um, and the archives in the library, um, they are still working to try to get access to those, but it's not necessarily as easy. Um, I'm not an expert in these fields, so I'm not going to comment specifically on what access they have. What I would suggest that you do is again, get in contact with your supervisor, get in contact um, with your academic leaders and librarians um, and let them know the resources that you need um, and they will try and get access to them if they're available. Um, but the library is putting pressure on other places to get access to places like that. So get in contact with them, let them know what you need and they will try and get access to it for you. Thank you. Okay, our next question is for Clara. Um, so, what extra support is the university providing for our mental health and well-being? Okay, big question. Um, so, 
One of the first things that the university did um, two weeks ago was quickly set up the website with all the information relevant to COVID-19. You have the updates there with all the information um, that uh, it, and it gets updated every day and it changes every day. Um, some of the information that you have there that I find quite useful, for example, is the self-isolation guidance, which is practical advice to people who are either self-isolation eating or people that are staying, staying at home. Um, this, um, this self-isolation guidance, I think it is, it is interesting because uh, if you have signed up to the self-isolation form, you will receive targeted information and support. So um, you will have information regarding students and their families, um, living on campus, using a shared kitchen, shared bathroom, shopping, laundry, cleaning and disposal ways. This is not very different to what the government guidelines are, but it is just more accessible for students and also for students that live on campus. So I would encourage you to inform the student hub uh, that you are self-isolating by um, um, filling the student self-isolation form that is on the website. Um, and if you do that, uh, the college team and the student hub and, may, and maybe your academic department will contact you uh, with targeted information. Um, so another of the things that uh, the university has been working on, it is what, what kind of student support services um, can they provide in, this, uh, in these times. Um, so Services such as Open Doors and Student Hub have, have been habilitated vir um, virtually. Um, your college teams should be there available for support physically, and other services such as IT continue via email, via chat, or, or telephone. Um, one of the biggest things that the university is launching this week is the Student Online Wellbeing page, which is going to have um, a centralized resource of everything that is, um, uh, that is there uh, to support you in terms of your well-being. Um, and for the ones that are uh, living on campus uh, still, um, most of our campus facilities are closed uh, or operating in a reduced service uh, but the security and the cleaner services are still operating and we are working uh, to see what is going to happen with the category provision um, so I will recommend you to to check your emails and see what is um, what is happening one of the big things uh, and most of the questions that you have um, asked for me is what is happening with the open door and disability service um, so there will be a physic uh, practitioner available uh, for urgent cases, but most of the of the service is going to be from, uh, operating remotely. Um, this is going to be done by the Big Wide Wall, which is an online service providing access 24-7 uh, of clinical support um, to people with anxiety, depression, and other common mental health issues. And they help us create a community online also um, to share any tips. So you can go and register now and the university will be contacting you further this week with uh, all the details regarding this. Um, so I think that's that's everything. <laughs> okay, cool. So next question. Um, if students are living in private accommodation and can't pay their rent, what should they do? Okay, if they're on private accommodation, um, such as um, the Student Castle, United Boulevard, and all those private services, some of them, they have, uh, some of the companies have already contacted uh, students with information uh, that they can be released of their contracts, and we expect other providers to follow um, the same, um, the same guidance. Uh, regarding private accommodation um, dealing with your landlords. <laughs> um, the government published on Saturday some guidance for tenants uh, and I would recommend to look for further communications because I'm sure this is a hot topic that is not only um, impacting the students but everyone in the country at the moment. Um, you should know that your landlord is still has responsibilities um, towards you so they should be available to amend repairs in the house if there are main repairs like um, I don't know, your laundry machine <laughs> um, and things like that. Um, so if you have a private tenancy agreement, um, I would say contact your landlord, your house provider and other housing services that you ha can access online um, and um, try to talk with them um, about the circumstances um, and about not being able or being struggling to pay uh, rent due to, your, due to your current situation. Because even if they are not legally bond 
to allow you not to pay, they may be discussed with you and have a temporary reduction in rent or um, arrange payments for a later date. So one of the things that I wanted to say about private accommodation is that your landlords are not allowed to evict you <laughs> during these months and this is uh, the new legislation so if you are being threatened by with eviction however contact a member of the student support and advice team because the university can provide support regarding this and you can also access the university COVID-19 emergency fund for financial assistance so those are the two things that I would recommend you to do. Okay cool so uh if they are a tier four visa student, where can they find advice about the current situation? Okay, um, so the international team at the university should, in the international student support, um, should um, update you with any guidance that the government um, may may give for students on visas. Again, this is a topic that is not only depending on your university, it's a national issue, um, so it changes a lot. Last week, uh, the government made um, a statement um, noting that all visas uh, can be extended uh, until the 31 of May. Um, so you can register for an extension and you can contact the coronavirus immigration team. Um, so I would say recommend you to, to contact the International Student Support on the email immigration at york.ac.uk <laughs> if you are concerned about your visa or if you need to apply for a visa of different category. Okay, and last question. Um, it's quite a stressful time at the moment. So what can students be doing to help maintain their well-being? Okay, um, <laughs> one of the first things that I would say is lo don't lose your, uh, like don't lose, <laughs> don't lose your calm. <laughs> Uh, we are all in quarantine and we're experiencing a lot a lot of overwhelming information all the time and worrying information. Um, and I think one of the main messages that we are receiving these days is um, to be productive and finish your thesis and write that article that you're missing and start learning a new language or start, like, I would say, you don't need to be productive. Like, you are also allowed to just be laying down watching Netflix and that's what most of us do regardless what your Instagram may say you um, but I do think that it is important to maintain a routine um, I think like at every, everyone at this point knows that waking up at, at the same regular hours that you do taking showers dressing as if you were going to go out maybe go for that um, government uh, allowed session per day um, and yes, just try to maintain your schedules of food too, like stop eating dinner at 11. If this is not Friday or Saturday eating every day. Um, so try to maintain your routines. It really helps. Um, it really helps to your body uh, and to accommodate uh, to the new situation, especially for the ones that are struggling to work at home. Make a schedule of how many hours are you going to work. Do not work more than eight hours. And I would say do not work more than six hours. Um, so some of the other advice that I would say is contact people. We are in isolation, but we are not alone. Uh, I know we are all bored of hangouts called by the, by the minute, but it is important to keep contacting your family, your friends. You can write them letters if you are uh, tired of your screens and you can do other other tries like other original <laughs> ways of contacting, like um, sending videos or just yeah, uh, making making a postcard for them. Um, be physically active. If you are not following already, follow our fitness morning sessions, um, which are for beginners, obviously. Uh, and lastly, try to eat healthy because there is no excuse for you to not to be eating healthy. You now have time to cook. Um, Jane, are you there? Oh yes, you're there. <laughs> okay, my computer just went out. Um, so I think that's all from us. Um, this was all the questions that we could gather and I hope it was not too
boring for you and that you can follow us. If you are still there and not as sleepy, um, please uh, send us a comment. Um, if you would like us to do more FNQs, we are happy to do so. This is mainly just us translating the information that the university should have already sent to you. Um, so it's nothing new, but we just thought this was a more accessible way of um, having the information. And I hope you are all taking care of yourselves and that your charts are not driving you crazy. <laughs> Um, to the ones that have pets, lucky you. Uh, and then I think this is us from today. Bye. Bye.